Yo, what is going on YouTube? I am Germ here. As you guys can see up on the screen today, we're going to be talking a little bit about G2. We're going to be talking about the crazy unexpected ending to their season, but also a little bit about what this kind of means for G2 going forward. Are there maybe more issues behind the scenes internally, mentally with some of the players and the team and the organization going on uh, than maybe we would have expected? Uh, and is it likely that G2 is just going to bounce back in the summer split? Are they going to, uh, you know, kind of struggle in the same ways in summer, maybe be the same? second or third seed coming out of Europe going into Worlds uh, and then be looking really, really weird heading into the 2022 offseason? Or, like a lot of people are saying, uh, does a brand new G2 era begin in the summer? They just kind of steamroll through everything and then we totally forget about spring because... You know, Spring Split does matter to an extent, and going to MSI would be cool, but uh, at the end of the day, Worlds is always going to be the biggest thing, so if they bounce back, win Summer Split, have a good performance at Worlds, I don't think too many people are going to be thinking back to Spring about that one time they didn't win a championship, but this could be maybe the beginning of something a little bit bigger and more troubles for G2 down the road. I don't know, but we're going to be talking about that. Before we get into that, I just want to mention real quick, if you guys have not already, please take a second smash the like button. I would appreciate it so, so much. It really does help me out with the YouTube algorithm, helping grow my channel, get my videos out to more people. That would be awesome. It just takes a little second. Uh, and then also subscribe to stay up to date on all my latest content so you guys don't miss out on anything we got going on in the future. Um, Tons of MSI videos obviously coming up, tons of uh, mini off-season videos between spring and summer. Sometimes some stuff can happen, Bloop, Wooloo, those guys, they've been tweeting a little bit, we'll see. Um, but with that being said, let's get right into this one. So Grabs tweeted out, this was after G2 got eliminated April 10th, um, he said, not sure what hurts more, that we are out or that I am not surprised that we are. We weren't happy about anything this patch and didn't find a style that suits us and we are simply just not the best team anymore. That is the harsh reality. I'm sorry to all fans. This was a very, very interesting tweet for me. Uh, I'm not totally shocked, but I think it does show uh, a very, very unusual sense of G2. And I think we saw this in some of the other players as well. And in a little bit, we're going to be going over a clip from Yankos where he actually says some similar things. The fact that G2 didn't expect to win really they felt whether it was the patch or just how everyone was playing or the form that they were in they felt really uncomfortable they felt really different they felt really weird going into these playoffs and maybe not going into the place at the beginning maybe they felt good but all of a sudden they win 3-2 against Schalke and you know there was maybe some people giving us some excuses like oh they trolled games three and four um grabs was talking a little bit you know starting to hint about how this patch isn't great for us. We don't really know how to front to back team fight that well. We have a bad read on the meta, but everyone was like, oh, whatever. You know, in the three games you guys tried, you guys smashed Shalka. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Then, and you know, maybe the G2 players were even still feeling good at that point. Maybe, it, obviously, it wasn't great to go to game five against Shalka, but they pulled it off. Who cares? They've been to game fives before. They've won. They've had some close series against some not uh, super top caliber teams before. Uh, you know, no big deal. Whatever. As long as they go destroy Mad Lions, again, it'll be something that nobody remembers about. But, obviously they go on lose three to one to mad lions and a lot of the same issues are popping up and all of a sudden maybe it's not g2 trolled game three and four against shalka maybe it's g2 is a little bit shaky right now g2 doesn't have as much control as they usually do g2 doesn't have as much confidence wonder all of a sudden is not informed yankos isn't informed mickey is maybe looking as bad as we've seen him play over the last couple of years this might be like the worst form we've ever seen him in um so then, you know, all these questions started popping up in the community and stuff. And and for the first time, there was still a ton of people expecting G2 to go on in the lower bracket and make a run. You know, I was definitely still predicting that. But people were saying that, like, look at this historically. G2 has lost before. They've made it to the lower bracket before. But G2 has never lost 3-1 to one in the upper bracket before. They've never got stomped as hard as Mad Lion stomped them in, uh, I guess it was the winner's bracket final. Uh, that's never happened. So this was at least a little bit different. Maybe G2 still goes to lower bracket. Maybe they still go on and win. But something different's going on here. G2's looking a little bit worse. Um, and again, to see Grab say that he's not surprised that they lost. Again, because most other people were, were shocked. This is not the G2 we expect. And also G2, we've come to know is this very cocky, arrogant, confident team that loves performing with their backs up against the wall. They are the, you know, perks with the one, two comfort zone memes and all the game fives and all the lower brackets and all the reverse sweeps and everything they had to do uh, to always pull out the title or always win the big game or always just defy your wildest expectations. It came off, it came off the back of crazy confidence and never being afraid or being scared of being down and also playing a crazy crazy aggressive style that put the pressure on people going with crazy picks having crazy flexibility and draft and all of a sudden 
all of that went out the window. You know, G2 tried some crazy flexible drafts. Uh, and that stuff didn't really work out. You know, teams weren't really phased by it. Teams were not surprised, and also teams just kind of rolled them over. I'm talking about, like, the Karma, AD Carry, the Trundle, Jungle, you know, all that stuff. None of their crazy surprise picks ever really worked, and uh, really... Once Rogue banned out, uh, you know, the, the super scaling comps from G2, like the Seraphine, Senna uh, type like that, G2 didn't really have an answer. G2 had almost no new, exciting, surprising drafts that shocked anyone. And yes, you know, they're talking about how this patch didn't really find, they didn't find a style that suits them. And yeah, I completely agree. But um, also, uh, you know, the other teams were able to find things that were successful for them. And I don't think it's just necessarily the patch. I think also, you know, this is the worst we've seen Wonder performing in quite some time. Yanko was not that great in the playoffs you know he got gapped by El Yoya and inspired both so he's a, at best the third best jungler in the LEC playoffs Mickey again like I said he was not looking great and I think Caps was solid I think Caps was decent but we've come to expect to him to kind of even be a whole nother level the expectations are really really high so to hear that G2 at least grabs was not expecting to win and was not surprised to lose not only in the finals but to lose in the semi-finals and that didn't even shock him that he's not surprised that they're the third best team in Europe right now after the run that they've been on and after all the expectations they had for this season of winning MSI potentially winning worlds potentially they got reckless he wins MVP you know he's the new man on this roster uh all that stuff to hear the G2 is not surprised by this that's kind of concerning and and that has me worried a little bit because once you start to lose confidence once you start to maybe second guess yourself maybe once you start to have some doubts uh and now that the the aura surrounding the unbeatable g2 you know how g2 are like the gods of europe and everyone has this mental block against them now it's been cracked mad lions beat them mad lions uh has now beat them in multiple series rogue beat them you know both of these teams beat g2 in a series both of these teams have maybe gotten over that mental hurdle you know for a, for a while it was definitely a skill gap between g2 and a lot of these teams but also a mental block between g2 and a lot of these teams kind of like what we used to see with western teams and korean teams when they were unbeatable for so long you know it was a skill gap but also uh getting over the mental hurdle of like oh my god we're playing a korean team you know some of that was going on in europe like oh my god we're playing against g2 oh my gosh g2 is so good how are we gonna win now Mad Lions knows how they're going to win and know that they can win. And now Rogue knows how they're going to win and knows that they can win. And now G2, for the first time ever, they've always been the best team. They've always thought they were the best team. They were always, always super confident. Maybe they're a little unconfident now. And, and could that affect them going into summer? I absolutely think so. And I think we saw a little bit of desperation from G2 uh, in the playoffs as well. Like, obviously, Wonder uninstalling WoW, you know, that was a big meme. But that did show that he felt he wasn't good enough and he felt he needed to grind and get ready and then it wasn't enough when he's done this stuff in the past they've always ended up winning the game or winning the championship or winning in the playoffs or winning the next series or whatever and that's always worked out but now he tried something he grinded really hard yes it was only for like five days and and that's kind of laughable to most people you know you usually need to practice for weeks or months or whatever but this is what G2's been doing. This is what they've been successful with in the past. And now that this didn't work and Wonder looked really, really bad in the playoffs, is that in their head? Yankos understanding that G2 had a leadership issue, but choosing to not do anything about it until a couple of days before the semifinals, before their elimination match, uh, that's weird too. That shows, uh, you know, how kind of dysfunctional potentially G2 was over the course of the season. Um, but like I said, we do have this clip from Yankos that I did want to talk about as well that kind of fits into this whole scenario. Um, this was from April 4th, so like a week before their matchup. This is Yankos on what team is the best in EU. Just eight seconds, real quick, real quick quick clip okay three one i think rogue is actually better than mad lions and better than us i think rogue is just the best team in europe and i think rogue will go to msi uh so at the time obviously we've heard you know g2 they're memers they joke around and stuff and, and at the time people didn't really know is he, is he being serious i mean it definitely seemed like he was being serious but like is he just saying that uh what does that exactly mean but again to see it not only grab saying he's not surprised but yanko saying yeah, he thinks Rogue is the best team in Europe. He thinks he's better than G2. Uh, and he, you know, was not really expecting to win that series. And and that's before the series. If you want to talk about after being like, yeah, you know, Rogue's pretty good. They were going to be a tough team to beat no matter what. But if you're saying before that you don't even think you're going to win, that's not good. You're not in the right mental headspace. You're not in the right space of especially a G2 player and a G2 team with all these ex expectations of being like, we can go out there and beat anyone in the world. Of course, we're going to beat Rogue. Of course, we're going to beat Mad Lions. We're trying to beat Damwon, and we're going to beat Damwon at MSI. It's not even a question if we're about to beat Rogue. If we're, 
about to beat Mad Lions. But if you're not even confident that you're going to beat Rogue, who, again, was in the loser's bracket, already got 3-1 by Mad Lions, uh, and was for sure not going to be favored going into the championship, that means you think that you're the third best team in the LEC, just like what Grabs is saying. And to me, that is so, so concerning. And then Grabs, with this uh, next tweet, he says, feel free to ask for my head. We weren't prepared for what Mag, uh, Mad and Rogue brought to the table and relying on the magic switch did not work out this time. We will have a deep look into what happened in the split and take all necessary measures. Sorry again, and GG Rogue. So again, him saying, you can ask for my head. And I agree with that to an extent. Some of the blame absolutely needs to be placed on Grabs. Them having a bad read on the meta, bad drafts, not being prepared. How he's talking about relying on the magic switch did not work out this time and like i said that's what g2 has done time and time again they've tried to just flip the switch in just a couple of days short time periods them doing unconventional things that most people would never recommend it would not work out for most people ever but they were g2 so things always worked out and to me uh, how Yankos is talking about the leadership issue and stuff they have going on. Some of that has to go back to grabs. The team uh, feeling like they can just flip this magic switch. Some of that has to go back on grabs. Like who is going to take the responsibility for G2 getting to this point where they were unprepared. They were, you know, taking things lightly and they end up getting knocked out way earlier in the LEC playoffs than anyone expected and not even going and getting that international experience that this team so desperately wants and needs if they want to go reach their future goals. Um, um, so, you know, I, I do think at the end of the day, some of that has to come back on grabs. I think some of that has to come back on him. And I have said uh, that if G2 did decide to make a coaching change, not in between spring and summer, but if they did decide to make a coaching change going into 2022, one, I would not be shocked. And two, I would totally not be opposed to it. I, I don't know um, exactly. Yes, grabs has done amazing things for this team, but they have now, you know, peaked two years ago and they got a little bit worse last year. And now they're getting a little bit worse this year. Um you know at some point this team isn't necessarily getting better under grabs regime uh they're not improving year over year it might be time for a new voice it might be time for a new head of g2 but uh at the end of the day i at least thought that it was really really crazy and really really concerning that multiple different members of g2 were not expecting or believing in themselves and being able to win uh the lec playoffs this year but that is pretty much it for this video today ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for watching i would definitely appreciate it if you dropped a like it really helps out the youtube algorithm leave a comment down below what do you think's going on with G2? Are you concerned that they're saying this stuff? Do you think they're in trouble headed into summer? Or do you think they're going to be able to flip the magic switch, turn it all around, uh, and be back better than ever in the summer split? I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions. Subscribe to stay up to date on all my latest content. Hopefully, I catch you guys in the next one. But until then, peace.